It's cold out here. I'm scared of fire, electric heaters are expensive, and I'm broke. But I have dryer parts. So in a previous video, I tested my, my propane burner for my foundry inside. I tested it for carbon monoxide, and it didn't put out any carbon monoxide. But for many reasons, I'm not going to use that, including the gigantic flame. I'd rather not burn my, my house down just yet, uh, especially not with something so blatantly dangerous. The other problem is all the moisture that comes off a propane fire. So kind of electric is where I would like to go to heat this place. Then I looked up electric heaters for a garage. They're not cheap. Uh, they're, they're pretty expensive, and then you got to wire them in. Uh, but I, as you might know, I'm an appliance repairman. That's my day job. So I have a whole work truck full of cool parts that I can't use because I need them for work. But the boss man's been in business for over 30 years, so he's got a lot of old crap that he doesn't want anymore, including this. This is an element out of, uh, I think he said, an uh, old Frigidaire. And he's just going to throw it away because he's never going to use this, apparently. I think he said this element is probably as old as I am, uh, but it's a 220 element for a dryer. I think I can make this into a garage heater. Let me explain. This has two prongs here. You put in the two sides of 240 volts. It heats up the element nice and hot. A lot of air moving over it from the dryer fan. Uh, keeps this cool and heats the air going through. So to find out how much heat, there's a law. It's called Ohm's Law. V equals IR, I think. So that's voltage equals I, which is current, in amps. So volts, amps, R is resistance. I know how to spell resistance. I know the volts, 240. I'll know the resistance. It's hard to get a clear number here. Come on, quit being a jerk. 11.5? I'll go with 11.5. I want to find the amps, so I equals V divided by R. 240 over 11.4, did I say? 240 divided by 11.4 is 21 amps. 21 amps. So, amps times volts, volts times amps equals watts. I forget the symbol for watts. So, 240 times 21 amps, 5,040 watts. According to Google, you get 3.41 BTUs per hour per 1 watt. So, 5040 times 3.41, yeah. 5040 times 3.41 equals 17,186.4 BTUs per hour. That's a pretty good number. So if all goes to plan, that's what we're going to get. Which isn't bad, especially consider all the parts I'm going to use were free. I should also mention these usually have a safety. Here's where it's supposed to go. That would take the form of like one of these. This, if the element gets too hot, this is supposed to shut it off. So it cuts power to the element. You wire this up in line with the heat. So this shuts off, but the dryer keeps going. The, the air blowing through cools off the element. Then when it cools off, this closes again and you get heat again. When that stops working properly or if it gets way too hot, this is a fuse that blows. Now this old one only has one, one safety and neither of these are going to fit because these are actually Whirlpool parts. And this is an ancient Frigidaire part. But we're going to ignore that completely today, not put a safety in. I'll do it later, but right now I'm just kind of doing proof of concept, and then I'll refine it later when I go to use it. To connect to this, I, I just I have a dryer power cord. Dryers usually go on a 30 amp circuit, and this is a dryer power cord, so this is designed for 30 amps. I just put these round lugs to, to go on there. The ground, I'll, I'll ground the case later. Again, proof of concept, I just want to see if it works. And then I'll refine when I have more time. It's actually a weeknight, so uh, I want to get back inside. I happen to know the power outlet that I get 220 out here for my welder. That's a 30 amp, uh, 30 amp circuit because my welder I think needs 27 amps tops. So yeah, everything is designed for a 30 amp service for like a dryer, and these are dryer parts. But I'm not going to use a dryer blower. I'm going to use this blower. This is just my garage fan, and it puts off way more air than a dryer. So I'm hoping the air going through the the element there will keep the element from getting hot. The elements. Uh, they're cooled by the air flowing through. So if the element doesn't have enough air flowing through, like if there's a, like a bird nest in your dryer vent or something, the element will get too hot, causing the safeties to blow, causing your element to die faster. Hopefully this will move so much air, the element won't get too hot. But I need to make a shroud because this is kind of a rectangular outlet. I know they give you this much, but this isn't actually where the air comes out. It comes out of this spot. You need to make something to fit that to the round shape of this. 
Sounds like a job for some cardboard. I should probably be more clear. I'm making a template. I'm not going to make the shroud out of cardboard. But yeah, that's kind of the general shape. I have some of these. These are four inch uh, aluminum pipe. These are for dryers. So yeah, everything is dryers here. Unfortunately, it's not big enough. Good thing I have an extra. Hmm. That's a little too big. Ooh, out of the way, jerk fan. I'm marking the location of the creases on here. Now I will fold them. These are very thin aluminum. So the folding can just be done sort of barehanded. Although be careful as some of them are quite sharp, depending where you get the, the fence themselves. We generally go with uh, aluminum vent here and steel elbows. We can get some galvanized steel elbows. Aluminum elbows kind of fall apart. Again, yes, remember, proof of concept. That's the plan here. Proof of concept, not perfection. Well, screwed that up. It's kind of like my burner. You know, I had the holes, the air holes, and then I had that aluminum sleeve to move back and forth. Well, that was just proof of concept, and then I went... Once it worked, I went and I made a better one. No, that's a lie. I kept using the proof of concept one. It worked really good. It really proved the concept now. Okay, and for tape, this is not duct tape. This is foil tape, which works a lot better in high heat situations. Even though this part of this vent, this shroud thing, is actually just going to get room temperature air through the fan. I wanted this to be blow through. Most dryers suck through, but I'm blowing it through because I don't know if my fan can handle the heat coming off of this. Doot, doot. Trust me, in a minute, this will not look so crappy. Just kidding, it probably will. Okay, a few minutes and one thumb cut later, I have this, this shape. I left it round here, and I kind of just bent this, bent this stuff to shape. So uh, this, I'm going to tape this to the fan, and this side, I'm actually going to put over this end. Um, there's a nice little clip here, which locates it. I suppose more tape. Again, foil tape, not duct tape. No offense to duct tape, but this stuff is made out of aluminum foil, so it can handle a little bit more heat. Um... There. There's a little bit of a gap between, but if there's air flowing over this, that'll just make sure the shell doesn't get too hot. At least that's what I'm telling myself. It's, it's a feature. It's not poor build quality. It's a feature. Let's see. Set that aside. Junk, 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 junk. Oh, that's a piece of steel. Here we go. I might cut into this to make this square thing fit a little better at some point in the future. Actually, come to think of it, maybe I won't because this fan, this is actually borrowed. This isn't my fan. Prop the front of that up on a dolly. Now all I have to do is tape this to this. This doesn't have to be real super tight. It does have to be clean though for the tape to work. Uh, it doesn't have to be super tight because there's no resistance in this at all. Uh, so even if there's some leaks around, most of the air will go through because no resistance. Here I'm going to use duct tape because duct tape's you know cheaper, and this is definitely not going to be hot. Hey, there we go. I don't know. I made too much duct tape. Mistakes were made. Just kidding. That's not a mistake. There is no such thing as too much duct tape. My plan for this is once I have proven the concept, I will make a frame like out of sheet metal that'll hold this all up, support it nice. You know, get get something so like there's actually sheet metal holding this up, supporting here, supporting here. Maybe some kind of adapter into this. Maybe I'll pop this thing off so I can just stick this straight on the fan. Uh, but proof of, proof of concept. I, I never do anything totally right. I mean, I can't, right? Okay, so if this is all hooked up, um, now I better make sure this fan works because I, I haven't tested that. Low speed. Is it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is blowing. That is blowing two or three times as hard as a dryer does. Okay, I just now realized I never hooked up the, the power cord to this. Oh! Stupid, stupid. Let's see, just to be careful there. 
I don't like it sagging so much there, but there's no support. There, there, okay. All right, get the camera actually pointed in the right direction. Okay, now all there is to do is test it. Let's turn on the airflow first. We do not want that heating without proper airflow. Let's put on low. The only thing in front of here is this steel thing, this steel thing, and this steel thing, so only steel things. Okay, now plug it in. Do we have heat? I feel heat. Huzzah! How much heat? Oh, nice. The element is barely glowing. Barely. The outside of the case is definitely warmer than inside. 60 degrees or so. Stick it in there, 300, so it's warming up. Cool, or not cool, warm. That doesn't sound cool. Hot? I think you have to be a teenage girl to use that word. Here's a look down it. Now notice where the, the wire goes through the insulators, it is glowing a bit red. Uh, a normal dryer element, the whole thing will be glowing red, or most of it. If it's like super bright red and orange and stuff, that means you have a vent problem, a vent blocked vent and everything is getting too hot. It's being cooled by the air going through it. And I think this is fantastic news. This, this air, it's warm. It is definitely warm. It feels like a, the air coming out of a hair dryer. You know, that's probably the best way I can describe it, except there's like 10 times as much of it. It's really blasting quite strongly. So there, moving tons of air and keeping the element good and cold, but still heating the air a great amount. I think, I think that's a success. This is great. I can even put my hand on top of this. I'm quite surprised. I think I made something better than I could have purchased. And it's all free and lots of duct tape. So this is just four inch aluminum dryer vent. Heating element you're never gonna find online for sale anywhere because the machines are all gone. Fan that I borrowed from my parents a long time ago. I think they forgot I have it. Boom, thumb and cut thumb up. This by the way, does not hurt, but it's going to tomorrow. I can already tell. Okay, final impressions. I've been using it for many days. I actually put the proper plug on, on for the outlet. Uh, I didn't show it to you last time because uh, I promise nothing was bent and no covers were removed to make it work. Nope, totally fine. I have this safety. This is the, the cutout, thermal cutout fuse looking straight at parts of the element. There's this safety, which uh, there's no mounting place for it, and I haven't stopped to create one. It's grounded now, so that's nice. But I, I didn't end up making the frame. It's more movable this way. I can, I can move it around. I just set it on the ground, and then all of the air that it blows circulates throughout the whole garage. Makes working on the van quite nice. It blows the dust away, and it makes everything nice and toasty. A, a bit too toasty, I might add. I need to make a thermostat. It's, it's only on or off. And even though it was zero degrees the other day, it got a little too hot. So there, dryer parts make a good heater. Also duct tape and foil tape. So, enjoy. My thumb has sort of healed now, in case you were wondering. Sure bled like the dickens, though.